All right, so here's our next project. This is a 1995 Moto 4 350. You see, we're not in the greatest shape here. Uh, it's kind of trash, but at the same time, it's not that bad. So this thing needs a ton of parts. Uh, I could go on with the list, but I've already got them all ordered. We've got a ton of stuff coming in. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get it to fire off real quick off of some starting fluid or something. All right, so we've got the blazer pulled up here. So it turns over okay. See if we can gas in there. All right, so it's got dark on me, but I went out and bought a compression tester. I kind of already figured this was the issue, but... As you see, we've got nothing, and it's just giving out the tiniest bit. You can maybe hear it. So we're gonna have to pull that head off. See, we may have bent a valve. There's no telling, but uh, we'll figure it out and go from there. All right, we should be ready to remove the head now. So Here's your damage report, and I have to admit, I was kind of expecting this. This is toast. Complete toast. Um, fortunately, the bottom end is perfect. And then over here, we've got the cylinder, and you can see there's the piston right there where it melted to the cylinder. I mean, this is, it's gone. This is garbage. So now if we put some clues together, we'll figure out how this happened. First, you see we're nearly out of oil. And then next, you can see how messed up this is. The wrist pin, let's see if we can get that scored open. You see the wrist pin is scored right here. This machine was run low on oil uh, and this only gets lubricated by oil splashing up so it's run low on oil this got a lack of lubrication seized up and then spun in the piston on both sides and also when it locked up it obviously kept it shoved against the intake side and creating that failure so i've got a used crank on the way a used top end uh, this is going to be kind of like a budget rebuild, I guess, a budget restoration. So we're going to get this cleaned up because this is kind of a mess to work on. I already went and kind of restored this thing as best I could. We're missing the reverse cover there, but we polished up the speedometer as best I could and uh, kind of cleaned this up. And that's basically the plan for this whole machine. You see I did a test section last night of uh, fixing the fenders as well. So I think we're going to have this thing looking pretty nice at the end.
there's a broken ground cable. That's why you saw the other one I just tossed away. We're gonna fix this original one instead of using that other one. There we've got our ground wire. So our CDI box is mounted right here. We are probably going to just unplug that and leave it where it's at rather than risk screwing all that up. Our harness should be free now. There we go. So we'll get that cleaned up separately. Because we're tearing into this, I'm not too worried about water and stuff getting in, but uh, I will put some sort of cover over that. Screw that in. So after a good wash, you see our frame came pretty clean. We got some of the engine clean, but I'm not super happy with that. Might do a little more to it. Same with the rear differential back here. This back section came clean, but up there was a little stubborn. So we're going to continue to pull this off and then I'm probably gonna start. I've been painting a couple pieces. So as you can see here, I went ahead and sanded and painted the handlebars as well as this rear rack mount. So we're just gonna keep doing that pretty much as we wait for parts to arrive. Uh, just keep doing the little stuff one at a time get this painted all the racks the wheels so I got this pulled our speedometer cable is broken also so I may go ahead and get another one of those This is destroyed. So we're definitely gonna be cleaning out this whole entire engine as best we can, just cause it's gonna be like this all through it. This machine has been abused really hard and uh, not maintained at all. Right down there. There we go, yeah. That looks much easier now. This should slip off. Well, it looks very rusty in there. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. Stator looks good. This flywheel almost looks brand new also. That's just a cam chain in there. see if this is I don't think that this is original this has been replaced at some point starter gear 
one-way clutch works good. Okay, cam chain and tension. We'll sensor off. Crush washer. Okay. Line these clutches up and they will come out apart from each other. You see there's that in it to let the gear slide past. So you're gonna be careful with this. As you can see, it's spring loaded. Okay. You've got those out, grab your clutch springs. Okay. This one is also normal threads. Sometimes they're, one of them is uh, left-handed threads, sometimes not. To be replaced also. Yeah, they're not terrible. They're definitely not new, but the clutch has not been burned up at least. There it comes. And now the rest of that slides off. We've got this mostly stripped down. The one Allen head bolt right here uh, really just took up about an hour of my time trying to get it out. It stripped out and uh, took a lot of welding, but we got it free. So now we are ready to work on pulling apart the main case. Got two inside right here. This isn't the greatest way to do this, but sometimes that's just how it is. Okay, so we're through right here. Work our way up. Yeah, we might want to say, yeah, this thing stands right up. You plus it's mine. Not at all. It stands right up. All right. Okay, so we just got the case split. Now, this is where you want to be careful. 
and make sure you don't really drop anything unless if you have the parts diagram uh, on hand. I do. So now it's really just a game of cleaning this all up, checking out these bearings also, and uh, waiting on the parts to get here. So here you can see why our, usually the rear axle bearings fare, fail. It's just because a failure of maintenance, but you see this thing is garbage. So we're getting those replaced and then we will do the brakes. Okay, so I've cleaned up our axle and checking out the ceiling surface here. You can see it's pretty rough. So we're gonna go over that and uh, try and smooth that up. All right, so we've got new bearings and seals here. All right, so we've got our axle installed with the new seals and bearings, and you can see we've got no play, so that's much better. So I really didn't even need new brake pads, but we've already got them, so we're going to put them on, and uh, we're going to get the rear brakes set up, right? I think our goal is to get it lined up with that as a starting point. So we got just a little further to go. right there. There we go. Got this part.
All right, so I'm gonna end this video here uh, just because I don't have that much uh, storage for all this video footage. But we've gone ahead and got our good crank pressed in here, the old crank out and gone. And uh, obviously in the next video, we're going to be reassembling the engine and uh, finishing up the rest of the quad. I've got a bunch of parts in for it. You know, we've got everything over here that we pulled off the air box and everything i also went ahead and got the wheels painted put new brake shoes on the front and uh, wheel bearings obviously on the rear and front also so we've got a lot of work to do but we're getting along pretty well so like i said that's it for this one and uh, stay tuned for the rest